This is pedalsandeffects.com with a kind of not pedals, your traditional pedals. This is more like Taurus pedals. So uh, keep Well, it's a MIDI foot controller. Well, right, but I'm saying like I'm using it like Taurus pedals. Right. So pedalsandeffects.com, Taurus pedals. Bass players know what Taurus pedals are. We use them. Rush used them. Yes used them. A lot of people use them. So basically getting into this, Keith McMillan is out of the Bay Area. Um, the automator from Deltron 3030, he has a couple of their things. He does the, the Bluetooth pads. So he told me about it. I thought it was cool. I looked up on the website and saw that they made this. And I went, oh, I could do Taurus pedals. So here's my Moog Minotaur. And this is an awesome little bass synth thing. You can dial in your bass synth sounds. And since this is MIDI and this is MIDI controller MIDI, you can use this as your keyboard and play uh, bass. As notes. opposed to the big bass pedal Correct. things that you got to lug around. Right, because right? like because because Moog makes the Taurus pedal and that's heavy and huge. And the old ones were really heavy and huge. I used to have those. But look at this, like you could pop these dudes in a backpack and you are playing bass synth along with whatever your backing tracks and whatever. For Big Sur, this is just Lisa and me touring. This is my bass synth area and this fits in the backpack with my pedal board and then my backing tracks that are on my iPad and her singing and her synth. We can fit everything in a suitcase or whatever and we're traveling full band. So this is absolutely genius for how I use it. Nick uses it for his touring band but in a different way. So, okay. I was really excited when you told me about this uh, company. I had heard about it, the 12-step. They also make something called the Soft Step, right. uh, which I think Agata from Melt Banana uses. They're, I mean, it's, so it's a midi foot controller. Look at this. They literally have like a video of a truck, truck. running it over, right? Yeah. So it's this really like, just like, you know, durable, cool little foot controller. Uh, so what I do is I use something like this uh, when I, play gigs when I gig out on like the weekends, you know, yes. gig nights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so uh, my band is a three piece band uh, and we like to have a lot of sounds going on. So, you know, we have samples and stuff. So it used to be the kind of thing where I'd be like, you know, playing guitar, doing this thing. And then I just like cruise over really quick in between notes and just like hit a sample and I'd hit the wrong one. And then this would knock over and like, you know, disaster. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna tell a bit of a story. Okay. Right. So I needed a MIDI foot controller for this thing. So I did some research and found out that the only one that worked for the Roland uh, SP series was a, this big Behringer gnarly thing that was probably this big, heavy plastic, um, and it didn't actually work out of the box. It wasn't supposed to like communicate MIDI with this. So you had to like get a new computer chip replaced and have this big pedal footboard modded. And then you had to download this ancient software to get it communicating, like get all the numbers correct. And MIDI is a weird world that right. I don't fully understand. Right. But basically I had to sit there with someone at a computer that knew how to do this and like, very meticulously go through and link up all the signals or however it works, right? Jeez. So, okay, so that was like a nightmare to get it done. Then, you know, uh, Terramelis was in Russia and of course, plug it in and the footboard explodes, right? It doesn't work. <laughs> oh, cool, rad, and we're in the middle of nowhere and my thing stopped working. So I had to come back home, find another one, get the chip for it, and then do all the crazy stuff again. So point being like, in order to use this in a live setting the way I wanted to use it was a nightmare, right? So, and that was the only one that worked. Then these dudes come along and you tell me about them. Like, oh cool, you know, they're, they're familiar with the band or something. And I, I go to the website and check this out. I'm like, no, nah, I don't think so. I don't think that's gonna work. I mean, I've like done the research, you know? And then come to find out, I did some like talk with their techs over there and this does work with this. So it's way smaller, it's way lighter, the buttons are way more reliable, they don't go out on you. You still have to do some communication things, but way user friendly. So also you get this thing. Right. This right. doesn't work together. You need the MIDI expander, right. which has the MIDI outs. Because if you look at this, right. 
There's no MIDI on that, right? right? There's that, like, you need this to go to the blue box. Yeah. Right. So, because, I mean, you, you could plug this into your computer with USB and use it for stuff. I mean, right. a lot of For guys, a laptop. Yeah, a laptop. Yeah. Which I'm not trying to play a rock show with the fucking laptop just right. on the stage getting ready to just some idiot pour a beer on it right. or something. Right. So I've always been into, like, hardware that's a little more durable. Right. So, in other words, for me, this has been a lifesaver. Right. Nope. I feel you. I haven't used it in the live situation yet, but I showed Lisa it. And so I said, look at Big Sur, when we go to do it, we always want more instrumentation, but it's easy to do because I'm playing bass, I'm singing, she's playing keyboard, she's singing. I have to run the iPad. I also have a little mini synth. And so now it's like with this, it's like it's going to, you know, because when you're a two piece and you're, you know, you're not a. Well, yeah, and your hands are busy. So yeah. if you can, I mean, that was such a big deal. We had a whole fourth member in our band for a couple years to, to literally do keyboard stuff, right? right? And so once, you know, we were like, well, okay, it's not gonna work out, so how can I do this? Well, I need some, I need to be able to use my feet. Well, we play pedals, obviously, so right. we're already using our feet, but, you know, this obviously is a big deal to be able to just like cue things, either synthy notes or samples or whatever it is, anything that is MIDI, you know, has MIDI in it, you could set that up to. Right. I'm going to show you my Moog Minotaur bass sounds, and I'll play bass with it just to give you an idea of like how I use it. Nick's going to show you the way more, like, you know, actually, I think, really cool way to adapt to it because, you know, you're, you're triggering stuff. So, you know, that's, I think, a genius idea too. So uh, here we go. We're going to go do that now. We should say this on camera yeah. that there's a learning curve using that thing, right? Because it doesn't. Yeah, it's hard to yeah. like go from the soft step. It's gonna be rad once our, once we, our feet know right. what's happening with right. it. But it's like there is a learning curve. Too. All right. Okay. This is how I use the Keith McMillan 12 step. 12 step. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, see how that says E right there? You can customize your different banks. So, I mean, obviously this has, you know, uh, well, there's 127 MIDI notes possible. So you hold down the select button, all these lights flash, then you hit enter, and then you hit, uh, you know, depending on which bank you want to get to, hit one, and now I'm in bank A. So you can customize that to be anything you want. But since my Roland, is set up to be A, B, C, D, uh, and so on. I have this, uh, you know, matching that, but this could say like, you know, whatever. So here's another thing. Let's see. Uh... Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. 